<laughs> I mean, I've right, got a job. You've got a job. What's yeah. your job? What is your job in? Because you're bring a knife and a piece of fruit. So that's about right. right. <laughs> so first course we had the uh, we had the hot smoked trout and watercress linguine, which was absolutely gorgeous, and uh, still getting there. Still getting the smell of that, but uh, with second course, second course, pear and almond tart, and you're saying, Susie, this is like a, a cheaty version. This is a really cheaty version because apart from a little bit of flour to roll out, a little, little bit of egg to wash it with, it's only three ingredients. So. Fabulous. What are those three ingredients then? Uh, puff pastry, marzipan for the almond sort of side of ah, things, right, okay. and lovely Hampshire pears. I didn't even know you could get pears from Hampshire. See, this is showing my ignorance, really. Oh, we've got I, some lovely orchards in Hampshire. Because I think orchards, I think apples, but of course you get pears from your orchards as well, don't you? Well, pears are top fruit, just like apples are. So they're in, the, so they're, I'm guessing, obviously, they're in season. They're all in, they're all in season now. They would have been picking for probably eight weeks now, eight yeah. to ten weeks, and then they'll go in store as well. So, so how, do you know, how do you know when you get one, when you go and you buy one then, how do you know whether it's one that's been stored for ages or one that's just been picked last week? Is there any way of telling? If you buy them early on in the season, which is, you know, from September all the way through until Christmas time, you know, they've only been stored for two to three months, but you'll still get them later on. I mean, that, but that'll yeah. be only from very large orchards. I mean, there's a, a small apple grower in Hampshire Farmers Markets who's now finished all this fruit. So that's, that's the person to buy it from. Sadly, the very large apple growers they, they they put them in controlled atmosphere stores and literally all the all the air is sucked out and they replace it with different gases but even then they'll they'll sell all of their their, their stock within about sort of seven or eight months so if you come to being sort of june and july time you know it's not going to be late it's not going to be from, yeah. from around the corner which it as much as we can every monday night is here on this show so what are you going to do with that knife and that pair then what's the uh i've not been i've not been told yet <laughs> ian's not been told i'm just going to take you through it it's very easy actually what you want to do is um cut the pair into quarters. So you've stood it on its thick end, I'm just trying to... Oh, OK, yes. Yeah, so it's standing on its thick end, <laughs> and then you're slicing it down right down the middle from the top. Yep, and then again, into, so it's into four pieces. Right. And then you just want to um, take the core out. Pears have a very small core, so it's not like apples where sometimes it can be a little bit woody. Um, and then what you want to do is just um, take it into slices, and it, these are quite thin slices, so you're probably going to get about sort of five or six per quarter. Right. So once you've got them looking like that, and the idea is to get them quite uniform. So that's really that the only hard thing that we're going to be doing today is just making sure that the pears are all the right sort of shape and size. So, so just to recap, you get your pear, you stand it on its bum, you slice it down the middle, then you slice it again, so down you've got four again. bits, yep. and then you shave little sort of lovely looking bits. Lovely looking, sort of about um, between about three mil and about sort of six millimetres in width. Right. Ish. So, <laughs> so there ish, we go. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so what? I'm going to leave it in to get on with Ian, you carry on chopping. Susie, you tell us what's going on now. In the meantime, um, what I'm going to do is um, roll out the pastry. So I've just got some um, some ready-made um, shop-bought puff pastry. Puff pastry is one of those things that you can make it yourself. It's quite That's difficult. too short, isn't it? It is That's quite difficult. Short. And like, very occasionally I'll sort of like make the effort and I'll sort of set the morning aside and you can make something like that. But, I mean, a lot of top chefs use ready-made puff So pastry. what you're saying, Susie, is when you're on the telly, you make it yourself. When you come in here... <laughs> <laughs> just get it out of the freezer. Thanks very I mean, much. Short crust is another matter. I mean, because that is that's so easy that it's just daft to go and buy it. But for pastry, you know, if you want good results every time, just go and buy it. <laughs> Gee, this is always if it's good enough for tea dear, it's good enough for, it's good enough for, for me. I tell you that. So a bit of pastry. We're rolling it out while Ian's chopping the old pears there. Yeah. So nice dusting of flour on the work surface there. Um, and. The trick with rolling it out is really not to press too hard, just do it gently. Um, and you just want to roll it a little bit, do it a quarter turn, roll it a little bit more, another quarter turn, and you just keep going like that until it's about sort of three or four millimetres thick. You might want to do some kind of conversion to Imperial three, at this three or four. stage. <laughs> so, so, so quite thin, really. Right, quite thin, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about the uh, the thickness, maybe the twice the thickness of a CD. Would that do it? Oh, well, yeah, that's the quite good. Of a CD. Or even, um, I mean, the thickness of a pound coin. That that would be kind of the thickest that you want to get. There we go. Everybody's got a pound coin, so yeah. there you go. It's about as thick as a pound coin. We'll leave you rolling. We'll come back in a second. This is Wave by Five. It's the evening show. Andy Jackson here and uh, Michael Jackson on the way in a second. Back to the tart tonight then. 
Forbes. I could possibly have phrased a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. There then. we go, yeah, Susie. Right, go on. <laughs> um, so what we've done, we've just rolled out the um, the pastry here. So it's uh, about a pound coin thickness. thickness. Yep. And brushed it with egg wash. Um, and that's going to do two things. It's going to stick the marzipan to the tart so it doesn't kind of come off separately. And it's also going to make the outside of the tart um, look lovely golden and brown. So we're just rolling out the marzipan here. And the marzipan you can take really quite thin. I'm only using about half a packet, so it's about 125 grams. So that's it's quite hard work to do with the rolling out, you know. It's quite a good, quite See, a good workout. I've got the easy way. I just sit here and put up occasionally. Very, <laughs> very good. Another bit of a try at the end. Um, so yeah, so you want to get the marzipan. So it doesn't have to be quite as big as the pastry because you want to have a good um, kind of rim of pastry all the way around, and that's going to allow it to rise and go all nice and crisp. Um, so when you think you're very nearly there, you just want to trim off the sides all the way around with a sharp knife. So you basically got like a sort of baking tray with a layer of uh, layer of uh, pastry in it, and now a layer of marzipan that's going to go I have. on top of that. And I would normally do a round one, um, but because I've got a slightly sort of elongated tray, I thought we'd just go um, rectangular. Do an oblong one, yeah. So you can do either way. And that just goes so the marzipan on. sits on the top, so you've got like a two layer thing, so you've got your pastry on the bottom and marzipan on the top. And if it doesn't quite um, meet up, we can just trim the marzipan that's on there, just don't cut all the way through to the pastry. So you just whip that off there. And then what I'm going to do is um, just score around the outside of the marzipan with a knife, and you want to go about halfway down through the pastry. And that means that the pastry um, can then rise outside of the marzipan, and it means that if there's any sort of juicy bits, it all gets contained within the pastry Love it. and it doesn't run everywhere. So that goes around like that. So just scoring around the edge and then I'm guessing that this is where I'm this is where I'm I'm pre-thinking what you might be <laughs> thinking maybe those pears are gonna go on top of that. That's what's gonna happen. And um, this is the, the bit where you can be quite artistic and you can either sort of throw them on in a big jumble or you can make it look really quite pretty and you just want to um, go along and um, just overlap them. So you, you if you're doing a rectangular one, you just do sort of maybe two or three or four rows of, um, of pairs all running along the, the same way. And actually, it doesn't take very much time and it doesn't take very much effort, but it does look really, really pretty. And it looks like you've just been to a French patisserie and bought yourself a lovely expensive tart. So. It's looking good because there is one where, sadly, you had to prepare it earlier because we didn't actually manage to get an oven in here tonight. <laughs> so if we can if we can just, uh, this is for the purposes of the video, if we can just have a look at what, it, at what it comes out like after it's so, been cooked. How long is it? How long is it for. It's about half an hour. You want to keep checking it after about 20 minutes. After half an hour it should be lovely and glossy and golden and um, the pear should just start to sort of go golden brown around the edges and the pastry will be cooked underneath. Give it a little try. And the marzipan is transformed into like a lovely frangy pan. Oh. It's all nice and sticky. And it smells absolutely lovely. Did you do anything so, with the pears? Or did you brush the pears with anything? I didn't know. It's just like the, the natural juice within the pears mixes with like the sugar from the marzipan and glazes itself. So oh, super, super simple. I have to apologize. Uh, Susie, my pears aren't all the same thickness. They're they're a bit au naturel. So I wasn't going to say anything, but they're not quite. Sorry, <laughs> it's, got, it's a man thing. We've got about half a minute left. I've got to have a little taste You've before we go some. to the news, and I would just give a you know give a verdict. If it tastes half as good as it looks, I would be very very happy indeed. A reminder as well: if you want to have a go at any of this, the recipe, all the ingredients, everything, wave105.com/andy, and you can also uh, text your photo through. So do you want to pass that over here? I just want to pass it on the slicer thing. On the slicer. That's that's fine. So this is Hampshire pear in the tart. Oh. <laughs> oh. On that note, I will say fantastic. Susie, thank you very much for coming in this week. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Ian, thank you for coming in again. Welcome. And um, I will tell you what we've got coming up on uh, next Monday's show after the news, because right now we're out of time. Thank you very much for another enjoyable cookery corner this evening.